Thank you, Werner and Nicholas. <laughs> um, that's the easy part. <laughs> now we go into our Q&A sessions, ladies and gentlemen. As I indicated earlier, please do type your questions in the chat box. Well, I can't say this one's a surprise, Werner. It's actually aimed at you. How is it transitioning going from green blood to blue blood? Thanks, uh, thanks, Tabiso. Uh, the last time I, uh, I checked, I think it was when I donated blood, my blood was actually red. But I, I understand the nature of the question. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been going very well. It's been a very, very exciting uh, and whirlwind first three weeks for me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, really, really exciting to get to know these businesses, really excited about their growth prospects, talking to customers, partners, uh, and of course our people. Um, and they're really, really pleased with what I've seen uh, in our people, their passion and commitment to the business, their pride in the Alton brand, and also a, a very capable leadership team. Thank you, Werner. Please, can you provide progress on the sale of the MS banking unit and indicate what percentage of revenues and profits the banking unit represents in H1 FY23 managed services results? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think I did allude to it earlier on. The sale of that business is, uh, is pretty much imminent. Uh, Nicholas can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about 60% revenue contribution uh, to manage uh, services in H1 and the majority of the operating income. Having said that, if we look towards H2, we are expecting a strong performance and operating income contribution from the remaining kind of the end user IT services and retail side of the managed services business. Thank you. Obusha continues to underperform. When does management expect a material turnaround? Thanks, Abis, I'll take it. I think we need to acknowledge that there's two streams that run through the uh, Boucher business. You've got the managers, managed services element, which has a consistent type of revenue and unity growth, and then you've got the lumpy software sales. There was a big push to drive um, a, um, a PO to, to you know, fall within the six months. Unfortunately, just due to timing, it landed in September and not within the H1 results as expected. And if that landed, we would have expected Abusha's results to be 75% up from, from the prior year. So we are confident that we're heading on the right trajectory till the year end. Thank you. Why is NetStar's ARPU dropping locally? If I can take that one to be slow. I think what we need to acknowledge in, in the South African um, business, we've got a high additions on our subscriber base coming from the Toyota business. Those Toyota ARPUs are sitting around 26 Rand per ARPU, and you will see that compression from our, if it was year end, um, year end February, our average ARPU in SA was 122 Rand, just because that increase in subscriber growth is outperforming the rest of the channels, we see that compression on the overall ARPU because of this 26 Rand. I think what we need to focus on is, um, with regards to the Toyota contract, is we are converting 52% of those contracts into SVR, which then expands the ARPU in other channels. Um, but that conversion rate needs to be a lot higher. We, we expect it to be high, and, and management is working really hard to get it, get it to acceptable levels. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Over the last five financial years, the own platform businesses have contributed 35% and 80% of Altron's group continued operations revenues and operating profits respectively, i.e. excluding the Bytes UK business and other discontinued operations and head office. Can investors expect the same for the next five years or will it, the other two businesses segments, managed services, digital transformation, start to improve the operating income margins to de-risk the, the dependence of the own platforms to carry the Altron group? Uh, I think, to be so, let me, let me take that one. Um, yeah, firstly, we, we definitely acknowledge that we want to improve uh, the operating income contribution, particularly from the digital transformation segment. Having said that, we are very, very proud of our own platform segment, high annuity business, high operating incomes, quite a predictable business, but we do acknowledge that the contribution is maybe a little bit overweight right now. 
Uh, I think both myself and Nicholas uh, alluded to it earlier on. We want to continue the growth journey in Carabina. We want to continue the growth journey in security and we're focusing heavily on the Altom Systems integration turnaround. Alton managed services that, that remains outside of the banking unit will also be profitable. So yeah, we certainly are targeting a, a significantly better contribution from the digital transformation and managed services segments going forward. Thank you, Werner. What value is management targeting to reduce working capital in Altron's continued operations over the next 18 months? Thanks, I can take this one. We spoke about the working capital levels of just under 1.6 billion, and we've also referred to the abnormally high inventory levels to compensate for the risk around the supply chain challenges that we face. So over time, over the next couple of months, we do see that normalizing um, and, and reducing that exposure. But I think if I focus on the, the two um, disposals currently, Ultron Document Solutions and the banking business, we do see a release over the 18 months of around 600 million and north of that. So I think a, a comfortable target would be half of the, the balance that we've got now um, would be an acceptable level for management. Thanks. Thank you. How does Ultron management plan to allocate the cash flows from its disposals, special dividend, pay down debt, or make acquisitions that meet Ultron's four strategic requirements? Uh, so let me let me handle that one. That's quite a good question for the for the new guy who's been in for who's been in for 15 days. If I had to articulate probably my top three priorities, two of them I've mentioned already, which is the improvement in the NetStar and the ASI business capital allocation. Certainly is the third one. So we will definitely look at all of our available options. Um, we want to make sure that we allocate capital responsibly, obviously. At this point in time, I, I probably do favor acquisitions. I think there are great opportunities to really bolster uh, the already significant capabilities that we've got in our growth segments, uh, you know, to really drive our growth journey going forward. Thank you, Werner. What percentage of Altron's revenues are generated outside of Africa, and does management expect this to change over the next three to five years. If positive, which businesses will enable this positive momentum? Thanks, if I can take this one. So, so currently we average in around 5% of our revenue to be outside of the borders of SA, and it's, it's really driven by Netstar Australia and Netstar Malaysia. There are um, grassroots businesses that we've opened up in the UK for Ultron Security, and despite that not being a big drive on the revenue line. It is a break-even business and it's kind of set for scale now. So we, we are going to start seeing profitability trickling down into, into our results coming out of that, that region. I think we've always indicated that post Bytes UK, we want to look for assets that will give us access to hard currency exposure. So that is something that we always want to consider. Um, and then just from an expansion front, like we said, security within the UK and Europe. And if we had to look at our own platforms business, um, Southeast Asia is a gr high growth potential um, region for telematics, so we'd probably look at an expansion um, in, into that area when we are ready. Thanks. Thank you, Nicholas. Very encouraging performance from Altron Fintech over the last 18 months. What factors have contributed to this, and can investors expect more of the same growth trajectory for the next 18 months? Uh, yeah, as we mentioned, definitely one of our stars in the last 18 months, uh, really, really top performer for us in H1. Uh, I think also just important to understand the nature of the fintech business. Again, it's got two sides to it. The one is, you know, high volumes of transactional services to over 2,000 customers on a monthly basis, which is fairly predictable um, and annuitized. We have very high market share in that business, so that's driven you know, some of the, that operating profit growth over the last 18 months. The other side of the business is the sale of very, very specialized hardware equipment, particularly to financial services companies around the issuance and personalization of credit cards. That part of the business does re rely on the, on the procurement cycle of those companies. And we had a large procurement in H1, which uh, really helped with that performance. But we're very confident about this business going forward. We think it's got a good value proposition, as I said, you know, really well positioned, great market share. Um, so we, we really are expecting good growth from this business going forward. Thank you, Werner. 
Top line and bottom line growth has been stagnant for Ultron Health Tech over the last five years. Can investors expect the same for the next five years, or what catalyst will spark meaningful growth in both metrics in this time frame? Davisa, so I think it's important to understand, firstly, certainly the operating income for this year that has been fairly flat uh, is intentional. We made some intentional investments in the business. We called out earlier on the investment in that cloud-based platform for the clinical care solution, which we really think can drive growth for us uh, going forward. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not, not just that, but also looking at uh, really making the transition to a platform-led business. There's a lot of really great data insights into that business that we're looking to monetize, and we think we can really turn it into an a, a ecosystem platform type player. So we, we are posit positive uh, about its growth prospects, and we've got a lot of focus on that business over the next five years. Thank you, Werner. Next question is, excellent turnaround at Ultron Carabina. Congratulations to the management and staff. Can investors anticipate this business to mirror Bytes UK on a smaller scale, but same growth or profitability trajectory? I think if I can take this one. I think we need to understand the two businesses are slightly different. Um, Bytes UK, predominantly strong in the software sales side, big sales engine there that, that drove that reseller of licenses. Carabina has that in their business, but also has a consulting leg to it. So not only do we sell the licenses, but we actually consult with our clients, embed the technology, roll out the, the, um, the, the CRMs, um, for example. So in terms of scalability and growth, traditionally a consultancy-led practice has a slower growth and the ability to scale. However, as we mentioned earlier, that the, license, the licensing side is growing. Um, I mean, licensing revenue has, has got, uh, increased by 103% from the prior year. And um, we've got our eye out to capture 30% of that market. And once, that, once you get that scale of the licensing, we will see a, an acceleration in our trajectory of our, of our earnings. Thanks. Thank you, Nicholas. Next question is, Werner spoke of the Ultron business as having star performers and some facing headwinds. Can he elaborate on what the company is doing to keep the momentum going for star performers and pull up those facing headwinds, given the current economic conditions? Very good question. I think I have touched on some of it, but, but let me elaborate, uh, let me elaborate again. Um, in, in the NetStar business, you know, really, really big focus on replatforming that business, uh, making sure that our business systems help us to, to really manage that churn pressure that we're experiencing, uh, you know, big focus on internal efficiencies as well, keeping our costs down as much as we can, and then really improving the experience for our customers, really making sure that they're happy, you know, kind of throughout the value chain from from signing up to fitment uh, to actual tracking, tracking and recovery, Altum's, Altum Systems integration, and I mentioned a really high focus. Uh, I, you know, I do come from that world, so I'm going to be working very closely with, with Colin and the team to, to fix that in as short a space as possible. And our focus there is also long-term growth. I do think we've got some, some great customers in that business and a great value proposition. Uh, you know, we, we continue, we expect FinTech to continue on its current trajectory. I, I referred earlier on to health tech. You know, we are expecting our investments in that business to, to pay off and, and really grow going forward. Uh, Alton Security, you know, very, very bullish about that business. Uh, the integration has, has gone fairly well. Uh, the company is on a really good forward trajectory. And then Alton Arrow, uh, probably the business that was most impacted, I think, uh, by COVID, uh, has rebounded really, really well. The forward-looking order book uh, and pipeline is positive. So also expecting a strong contribution from, from Arrow going forward. Thank you, Werner. Historically, Altron's shares have traded at a significant discount to net asset value, and more recently, it took the demerger and separate listing of Bytes UK for the market to recognize the value of that business. What are the top three things that Altron management are doing today that will unlock shareholder value in the next three to five years? Great question. Uh, so if I really look at the three things, the major things that we're focusing on. I think number one, look, first and foremost, we will obviously always consider, uh, you know, to maximize shareholder, shareholder value. I think the first thing that's most important for us, make sure we've got all our engines firing. You know, really, really make sure that we are driving all the businesses in our portfolio to maximum market share, maximum revenue growth, maximum operating income. 
The second thing is we want to make sure, and we're targeting our Capital Markets Day next year, that we maybe give our investors a little bit more insight into the underlying assets. You know, what is their value proposition? What is their uh, relative market share? What are their growth ambitions, both from a revenue perspective and from an operating income perspective? I think a lot of the questions we've received today you know, clearly indicates that there's a lot of interest in that. So we want to make sure that we can really unpack that uh, for you. Uh, and then lastly, I think you know, earlier on when I was talking about capital allocation, we, we are privileged enough to have a healthy balance sheet. So we really are going to be looking very, very closely uh, at potential acquisition opportunities in our growth areas. Those growth areas would be, would be cloud, digital transformation in general, security, um, and as Nicholas mentioned, we are also looking whether uh, you know, geographic expansion for some of our businesses, in particular NetStar, is an option. Thank you, Vanna. Well, it looks like there's no more questions. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our interim financial results presentation. Thank you again for making the time to participate in this event. Please enjoy the rest of your morning.